Hey, so I'm still in Leipzig, uh, Germany, and I've kind of figured out one of the signs of a declining, not just an empire, but a country. Um, the, fundamentally, it's when people would rather have your passport and your currency, um, but not your nationality. And of course, it's a bit of a you know, paradox, right? You have to have someone else's nationality in order to have the passport and the right to have a bank account. Um, and of course, some countries have much better options with passports and bank accounts and currency than other countries merely by accident of birth, not by merit. So what's happening now is that most people in the world don't want to be German. There's no need to be German. They want, but, but I guarantee you, if you're born in a country that does not have access to capital, uh, or a strong banking system that you probably want a German passport or and a German bank account. The two are linked together um, as part of an underlying security structure uh, that allows people to figure out, you know, not just where, exactly where you are uh, because of a chip that's on your passport, um, but also the ability to reverse engineer um, data that's based on that chip that's associated with a name, uh, that's probably associated with a fingerprint, and now with a facial scan. What's happening now is governments all over the world don't understand that. They're, they need people to come in uh, because otherwise population growth would decrease. As prices have gone up, um, pe people are having fewer children, so immigration has bridged the gap. That's a good thing. Um, I mean, ultimately, you know, you're not gonna have a lot of new ideas without um, you know, a lot of innovation um, and a lot of cultural exchanges uh, without some immigration. But what's happening now is the people within the governments, the majority usually, they don't understand this, this paradox. So what they're doing is they have a pool of money uh, that they spend and a lot, a lot of it is on things that are so completely superficial. Uh, one of the most popular ones is painting buildings um, in areas that are, you know, not the nicest areas. Um, so, but you know, it doesn't really work. It looks nice. Um, but because you're not dealing with the underlying structure, uh, it all goes to hell anyway. Um, and it's getting worse because a lot of the growth in the EU hasn't been organic. It's just been uh, legitimizing the mafia by allowing them to put proceeds of illegal activity into real estate. So once the mafia buys up the whole block, they don't need to improve the neighborhood. They, they own the damn thing. Uh, they just need to figure out somebody to put in, put in there to make it look like it's legitimate. So anywhere you go, you'll see all... Well, that, and of course, um, gambling. Gambling is a big one in Europe. Um, you know, you've got, in Eastern European countries, uh, you've got a gambling establishment that's probably as common as a Starbucks. None of this changes the fact that nobody wants to be German. Nobody. But they want the German passport, and they want the German pa you know, bank account. And, you know, this is a, a huge, huge gap that economics can't solve. Um, and it's particularly problematic uh, because you, you can't change a culture from the ground up. Or, sorry, from the top down. You probably have to change it from the ground up. And that's why Vaclav Havel, who is Czech, he kind of figured out this whole thing. He said that, you know, when you have a totalitarian state, uh, the only way to beat that state uh, is to have a parallel structure that is a grassroots structure that lives in truth. And it doesn't have to be a totalitarian state. It can just be, you know, uh, a, a, a sort of, um, although it can be a corporation, it can be a corporate state. It can be anything that's not working, um, especially anything that relies on a surveillance, which is unfortunately, you know, the backbone of what I just described as the secure bank account, the secure currency. Because once money went digital, you had to have, you know, a lot of these secure uh, institutions in order to, especially with technology, in order to facilitate those cross-border transactions. But none of that changes the fact that you can have the best technology in the world, but nobody wants to be German. And I can tell you right now that growing up in a time when, uh, in the United States, when it was on the way up, I never once thought at the age of 15, 16, 20, uh, that I wouldn't ever want to call myself an American. But now, after 16, 17 years of mistake after mistake, 
The same thing is happening on a smaller level in the United States. Uh, and so now if someone says, are you American? I say, well, I like the American passport and I like the American bank account. Uh, but I'm not sure I like the, the American government. And so this is, what's hap this is what happened in Germany. It's still happening in Germany because nobody is, is addressing uh, the underlying structure. They're simply trying to you know, facilitate you know, a lot of superficial changes with a pool of money that will typically go to younger people, uh, creative folks, in an effort to sort of show the government's or the corporate benef you know, sort of benevolence. Um, and you, know, you can see it, it's, kind of, it's not like they're not making an effort. Look, Shakespeare Street, Shakespeare Strasse. Uh, how you doing? Hi. But it doesn't, make, it doesn't change the fact that nobody wants to be German. Um, and that's the problem. And you're not gonna change that from the top down. Uh, you're gonna have to try to figure out a way uh, to do it from the bottom up. And the question is, how do you do that? Um, and that's why the United States had such a successful run up, uh, despite having you know, economic problems that were probably as severe um, as Germany's uh, post the wall with the integration of the East Germans into the West. What happened was, if you can convince the world that anybody can come into your country and call themselves that country's nationality uh, on an equal footing, uh, then you've, you're, you're getting somewhere. Uh, that's one reason why the French used to be so successful. Uh, they had these universal values of liberty, equality, and brotherhood. All of that, of course, seems like a joke when you look at it now with the cultural wars um, that are going on, the culture kampf, if you want to use a, ger a German word, I think, um, that Scalia used in one of his famous opinions. And none of this, again, has to do with being conservative or liberal that that's how you know, it's another sign that where you know a country is on the way down, is when your bank account and your passport are stronger than social cohesion.